as part of its mandate to scrutinize the proposed budget brought before them, the Joint Committee on Tertiary Institutions received the Minister of Education, Tahir Mamman, for the Ministry's Budget Defense. Ministry of 101.45 billion naira allocated for 2024, out of which 5.88 billion naira was for personnel cost, 1.08 billion for overhead cost, and 94.48 billion naira for capital expenditures. Minister Tahir Mamman said the ministry will ensure funds are utilized judiciously and bring back Nigeria's 20 million children back to school in the next four years. The basic policy thrust of the ministry which informs the 2024 budget and that policy thrust is found at page 5 of the submission. Now, as members know, we are the early days of a new government whose whose policy thrust is renewed hope, renewed hope, and education is also one of the main priority areas of the government. Out of the other themes, there are also about eight uh, sub-themes, and education, understandably, is one of the uh, one of the eight, because of the centrality of education. Basically, in summary, the details are here at page five, but in summary, the situation in education can be stated to be, one, we have a learning crisis, a learning crisis at the basic and secondary school levels in Nigeria now. Studies upon studies have already established that. Our graduates at, uh, at basic and secondary school cannot read, write, and comprehend those things. So it's a major learning crisis. Two, we have millions and millions of our country folks, young people, young girls and boys, who are out of school in their millions. So it's a major crisis for the country, for national development. Who can be employed, who can be employed by willing employers? Right now, we have that complaint about the quality of the products from the universities and polytechnics. So, uh, basically, the policy thrust of this government and the ministry is, not, is focused on these major areas. And uh, at page five, if you can see, quickly see out of school children, there are figures about 20 million or so, or more. And, my own view that there are actually more of them. So we are working on it to ensure that as many as possible of these children, those of them who can come back to school are given the opportunity to come back to school. Those who cannot come back to school are empowered through some form of skills training, short-term skills training, that to give them the opportunity to connect with society to be able to have a meaningful livelihood. So this is basically uh, what we are trying to do. And all these, to address problems of the learning crisis, we have already started the process of uh, stakeholders engagement uh, with a view to going to do uh, curriculum, review their curriculum, what they are told at that level, and also infuse the niche skills components, so that by the time they finish, not only will they be able to uh, read and write and understand, but they will all have some level of skills which they can now connect with society. 
And then attached to that as a prerequisite is teacher's professional development. Because you cannot have quality education at that level without quality uh, teachers. So all these are infused, and then also infused in it, as I said, uh, technical know-how, which means equipping the technical colleges, equipping the polytechnics to be able to produce people with skills, which is actually the level where most of the manpower is needed at this level. And then also the universities encourage them, but at the university level you don't direct a lot of things at that level, but encourage them to bring in uh, skills and enterprises and, uh, and, and uh, entrepreneurship, and then be also be able to conduct proper research and innovation, because it goes to the heart of every university which that exists uh, anywhere, so that they can be the reason for us to make progress in the country. And for research and innovation, they need suitable labs, they need appropriate uh, equipment for all these things. In their separate remarks, members resolved to conclude work on the 2024 budget proposal within the reasonable time to enable the budget be in use from January 2024. This motion is very, very important and is a key to the national development because he is representing us in the executives and we have very vibrant senators who are from the extraction of House of Representatives like Kaus Mela and Abdul Ningi who everybody knows them and I as a chairman and Tony Moy who are also and Abdul Hamid, who is a minister and ambassador, and a lot of our colleagues here. So in a very short and precise manner, Honorable Minister, we want to put you on notice that we have a very good associate in these two committees that are here from the House and the Senate and are interested because education is a key to success of any country without implementing and proper coordinating of education no country will achieve a sustainable development we in the tenth assembly under the renew hope of the executives will support you will give you all the cooperation and will make sure Next year, we revert to subcommittees to ensure that each and every agency under your preview is being oversighted because the primary role of legislators is to make laws, to oversight, and also work towards the progress and development of the country. So we will support the executives, as you said earlier on, the National Library is here, which is abundant. If there is collaboration, it being those that are benefiting from the revenue generation of this country, they can come up with a support to, to rebuild that very important program. And also another very important key areas, which we are embarrassed with you, if you look at it, as my, uh, my, uh, my leader, who is minority leader, spoke, the UNESCO program, we are invited after you left. The South Korean government has every opportunity to collaborate with Nigeria and a lot of countries in terms of exchange programs, in terms of bilateral cooperation, but because of the constraint, even funding our UNESCO office become a difficulty by the government. So it is very important, Honorable Minister, we revert to our various committee, we we'll look into it, and as my colleague said, as a chairman of TED Fund, we'll do justice also for the TED Fund projects and TED Fund funds, because it has been outlive its usefulness. So we have to make sure that we work 
people in collaboration with you because the new hope is determined to ensure success of this country. Honorable Minister and our very own Honorable Sununu, we have listened with rapt attention uh, your presentation of the proposals from the executives, uh, particularly the Ministry of Education. Uh, like the leader has said, I would have envisaged a situation where more allocations will probably be done to the educational sector. But I'd like to also say that it gladdens my heart that reviewing uh, previous year's allocation to education, there seems to be an improvement and we are approaching the 10% mark. I want to think that by the time we are done, uh, the committees will sit together and see if we can upwardly uh, work on it in a way that uh, the, the sector's uh, critical components and uh, requirements as regards education will be improved upon to produce a document that Nigerians can call our own and that speaks to the yearnings and aspirations of the people uh, with basic uh, secondary and tertiary education in mind. I'd like to highlight uh, uh, part of my mandate uh, as Chair Ted Fund, which also includes uh, the UNESCO and uh, other aids, foreign aids to Nigeria. The UNESCO Nigerian National Commission, NATCOM UNESCO, is well uh, uh, seen in this budget. And I've also seen uh, the capital uh, transfers of 700 billion to TED Fund, which uh, is directly under my purview. So I want to acknowledge that we are in receipt of these proposals and will deal uh, decisively with that. National Assembly, particularly the House of Representatives, was so conscious of the plight of the forgotten that out of school children, the Almadiris, and so many indigent and unstrict children roaming the streets that are becoming a menace. And today, most of the challenges we are having, particularly that have to do with insecurity, is associated with our action or in action in the past of educating or not educating this category of Nigerians. I'm happy the Honorable Minister have highlighted in the Ministry's program the issue of out-of-school children, the girl child, the youth and adult literacy, and vocational education and training that have taken a center stage. In the 2024 budget, we have seen that, yes, we are still limited by ceiling. The National Assembly is doing its best to see that those allocations are raised. Other programs that are under our purview, particularly the internationally funded programs, or those programs that are in collaborations or jointly funded, like the BESDA, Agile, and the other uh, program that are too numerous for me to mention here. A total of 270 vice chancellors of federal universities also appeared before the committee for their budget defense. We shall have a collaboration with NUC as we are aware that we met in Paris with you in the site meetings with some of the countries of the world. They are ready and willing to cooperate with the Nigerian government. I think as an academia, which is fundamental, we need as lawmakers. In this tense assembly, we have about nine committees under education. So by the first quarter of 2024, we'll collaborate with you. All the laws that you think it will be suitable and responsible for the smooth running of education under the executive and the legislators will make sure we collaborate with you and cooperate with you. In the House alone, we have more than 200 members that are members of this committee. And in the Senate alone, we have about 70 members. So we are going to work with you because we have discussed with a professor from South Korea who is willing already, and he was born and brought up in Nigeria. And he has a lot of uh, knowledge base on how to move from the existing situation for the landmark of the future of our children. So I think ES will work with you, will cooperate with you to make sure that all the universities that are illegally uh, 
operating will make sure that they are not operating in Nigeria so that it, your universities will be strengthened best both on private and public participation because there is government on and there is private on so you need to operate within the ambit of law guiding principles which I urge the professors that are here, all the vice chancellors that are here, should bring a proposals for the committees because we need to set the foundation for the better and sustainable and peaceful uh, uh, atmosphere in terms of education and development. During our familiarization uh, talks with the universities, a number of these issues came up. One, there are universities that were administratively established, but they don't have laws backing their existence. Ordinarily, such institutions are not supposed to be appropriated for. But we are going ahead with the understanding that NUC along with the ministries, along with the Ministry of Education, and those universities will, will quickly come up with bills to legalize the existence of those universities. We have a number of them. We have also discussed issues of crisis of employment, recruitment in the universities. We have also discussed the issue of IPPS, which I described as a single-minded computer program that's anti-intellectual, anti-academic. <laughs> a program that is inhibiting the growth and the development of education. We are collaborating, we are going to collaborate, the two committees of Senate and the House who collaborate effectively, we are coming up with joint motions on the two floors of the House of the National Assembly with a view to carrying everybody. There are, reserv there are reservations. I've had calls to issue a lot of statement which I consider personal and I've received responses from uh, various quarters about the dangers of allowing uh, of opting up removing tertiary institutions from the IVPS but I've allayed those fears but then we are still going to sit down convince whoever need to be convinced that the continued existence of this program would jeopardize uh, education. <laughs> By the time we are agreed on all the issues, the House of Representatives and Senate will come up with, with, with a joint motion be tabled on the two floors of the National Assembly and we hope that those motions will be carried and a lot of the issue will be resolved. A situation where universities will seek permission from the office of the head of service to recruit a staff. What does head of service go to do with the recruitment of intellectuals? <laughs> office of the head of civil service is supposed to recruit bureaucrats that will man ministries and exterminated departments, and not intellectuals. Universities are supposed to recruit intellectuals from all over the world and pay them and pay them living wages. I was disheartened. I was disheartened when last week I visited ABU and I was told that three Kenyans came on sabbatical and for three months they were not paid their salaries. The system could not quickly process their salaries and they had to go back in frustration. They worked for three, three months 
and they were not paid anything. And they had to go back. These stories cut across a number of universities where academics from other institutions, academics from other counties cannot come and operate freely in Nigeria. And academics are supposed to be operate throughout the world. It's not a local thing. It's not a country thing. We are talking about education that we valued internationally, not localized knowledge. That's why it's called universe. The universe is not just the universe. So, uh, uh, I've not had anything. You didn't present what is the total recurrent expenditure, for example, of all the universities. What is the capital expenditure? I thought you would, you would highlight that. Those, uh, well, uh, I have that of the NUC only, but uh, the universities have made their individual submissions. Uh, yeah, but, but we, we don't, as we said, we don't have the luxury of time to listen to each and every university. Uh, I thought you would give us a total presentation that we now uh, uh, look uh, yeah, later. I, I can transmit that. I can transmit that uh, subsequent to this interaction with your kind permission. Uh, I wanted to quickly uh, respond to the co-chair to say that uh, the issue of continued uh, illegality of some institutions, we are addressing it. You know, following that uh, very productive uh, session we had with you, we uh, went back to the NUC, we caused uh, a call circular uh, to be sent to all universities and all institutions that are yet to consummate their enabling laws. And uh, I want to undertake that in the next one week, we will revert back to you uh, with draft bill so that you can for succeeding uh, uh, action. Uh, I want to also say that we gloss over the issue of third-party funds. We mentioned that when we had the uh, interaction with the, with the House Committee, that because, as you alluded to, uh, the university enterprise must demonstrate its international character. I mean, there is no such local government university. I mean, you cease to exist. You lose your reputation as a university if you are only confined to your local government or to your state or to your region. You must, uh, out of necessity, demonstrate those attributes that make you a truly international character in terms of uh, research, in terms of uh, uh, mobility of staff, of students, joint publications, joint endeavors. Uh, but you know, universities, you have urged them to go out of the box through non-governmental sources to attract funds. But we have cases of universities that have uh, been able to attract funds to bring in you know, support, financial support from multilateral uh, agencies. But those funds are stuck in the CBN due to the CSA, and uh, I want to, on behalf of the affected universities, you know, uh, through your good offices, to take this up at the highest level, so that it can be easy for universities to, you know, to, to, to function. Uh, on this note, I will invite uh, Professor uh, Sagir Ademo Abbas, uh, the pro tem chairman of the Committee of Vice Chancellors. Uh, the chairman of the, uh, the committee is a brief, I, I mentioned that when we were here uh, last week, and uh, Professor uh, Sagir will uh, say one or two things on behalf of the system and on behalf of uh, 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 the famous Bayero University, Kano. I have attended this meeting. This is my third time as vice chancellor and my fifth time as a DVC to be here. But this is the only time I observe commitment of National Assembly members committed to education. I believe all of us here today, all of us here today will go home to our universities very happy to see our lawmakers highly committed to solving Nigerian universities' problems. I am highly elated and I believe I represent all my colleagues here by saying that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Co-Chair and other members, uh, the ES of NUC has uh, spoken of our challenges, but I would like to highlight a few more or re-emphasize what he has uh, mentioned. Uh, one of the major issues has been raised, that is the IPPRS, which I believe, uh, and I have a total belief you are going to do something about that, is really killing our system, is killing the university system for a vice chancellor to employ a cleaner, you have to go through 
seven or six MDAs to get no objection before a cleaner can be employed. And uh, at the moment, we have been made to submit lists of staff that have left the university. Uh, you see, all of us have a large number of people that either died or they left the service or they have retired. So there is huge vacuum in our system which we find it difficult to fill. So addressing the issue of IPPIS will go a long way to solve most of the problems we face in the university. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Co-Chair, another pressing issue which I hope the National Assembly will look into it, all universities in Nigeria today are facing challenges of light energy. This is taking large chunk of money we have in the university. You see universities buying 40,000 liters of diesel at the cost of over 50 million naira. And this will not last you three weeks. So energy, Mr. Chairman and Co-Chair and other members, please and please and please, please, God has given you this opportunity to be our lawmakers. Please address this issue so that universities will go out of this mess. Energy is a very serious crisis for us. Averagely, all the federal universities, averagely, especially second and third generation, first generation, if you go through their record, you see that in a month, each university will spend more than 100 million naira on light. Providing light to academic area, providing light to the student hostels and other places. So this is a very serious issue facing all of us uh, as universities. Uh, if you solve this problem, you see us thriving as institutions and coming in to solve Nigerians' uh, problem. And I believe other issues have been raised uh, by the ESNUC. If these issues are addressed, uh, that will represent all of us, and I believe it will go a long way to solve our problems. Uh, finances, as you know, uh, universities, we are not charging fees as other universities are charging like private. The fees we charge are registration fees. And these are targeted monies. If you ask somebody to pay for registration, you look at the money in total, you find that this money is targeting all areas of the student as he lives on campus. We spend money to conduct examinations. We spend money to keep the students healthy on campus. We spend the money to provide light. We spend money to provide security and cleaning. So this money we charge, we are not generating revenue in Nigerian universities. We are not generating revenue. We are collecting only registration fee, which will serve purposes for keeping our students on campus. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, if these issues are addressed, and um, as, as I said earlier, I'm highly elated to see the level of commitment among lawmakers in Nigeria today, we have never seen this before. So we hope uh, you go a long way to address our issues, and we have high confidence in you to address our, our issues. Thank you very much, and God bless you.